Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we've got a quick review and a ramble. And the ramble is going to be on some fragrance news. Um, before I get into that, I am dressed like this because I had a conference that I was at and I had to uh, deliver a speech. And um, so that's why I'm basically dressed like this. That's why I look like this. Um, if you're wondering, I did not dress up for the um, for the Initio review. Do not worry about that. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about um, what's going on in the fragrance world because this is some recent news. It just dropped within the last 24 hours or so. The news is basically this, that Advent International, which is a monetary fund, like a capital uh, company, um, that uh, kind of like a global private equity firm is the way that I would describe them. They uh, purchased Parfums de Marly and Initio. Now, before we go any further on this point, let me just say something very interesting that I've noticed, okay? As an observer, because that's what I like to do. I like to sort of look at things and I like to observe. And I'm not a very good American because I do this moronic thing called thinking. Rest in peace, George Carlin. Um, and he, uh, but basically, um, I've watched old videos from some of the bigger channels. I'm not going to name any names, but let's just say some of the bigger channels. And you watch some of these videos from some of these guys. And it's funny because back then they made it a point. There were a couple channels, a couple instances I've noticed this. And I found it very strange where they would review like an Initio or Parfums de Marly. And they would make it a point to say, these companies are not connected at all. And that to me got the gears turning because it really sounded like something that whenever the free bottle went to those people, the talking point also went out. Hey, remind them that Initio and Parfum de Marly are two separate fragrances or two separate fragrance houses. And the reviewer or the uh, influencer went, uh-huh, uh, 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 and they did it. Um, and so... You know, it's, uh, I just found that very interesting because the rumors, of course, persisted. And now, of course, we know the truth that uh, Parfum de Marly and Initio are joined at the hip. And, uh, of course, now that it's out in the open, everyone's going to ignore all of the previous, um, you know, all of all of the uh, previous, what would you call it, whitewashing. Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like you're looking at something, you know you're looking at it, and you see it with your eyes, and they're telling you what you see is not true. Um, and so, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that just really gets under my skin. I really don't like that. I don't, I, I like, I, I really like honesty. Um, and when companies play these games, I really get turned off. I've never really liked Initio or Parfums de Mali from the get-go, but I did see some sales numbers. And interestingly enough, so uh, the growth trajectory of the brand. So apparently, uh, Parfum de Marly did something like $260 million in sales last year, which was up something like 51%. So obviously their strategy of sending out free bottles and having the reviewers review it on YouTube um, is working. And the um, financial deal that Parfums de Marly and Initio, which the sales numbers on Initio are not disclosed. So we only really know Parfum de Marly side of things for whatever reason. But um, apparently the deal is estimated, estimated by sources in the industry to be valued at over $700 million. Now, the um, purchase that BlackRock made of Creed a couple years ago was estimated to be at around a billion dollars. All right. So think about the dollar amounts that we're talking about here. Olivier Creed turned himself into a billionaire by creating his brand um, and, of course, selling us all the backstories. And um, Parfums de Marly and Initio, whenever they followed in sort of Creed's footsteps, and it's interesting because if you look here, I'll just show you just real quick, just just for shits and giggles, since we're kicking the shit here. If you look at a Parfum de Marly bottle, which this is one thing I actually do agree with Sebastian on, that Herod is their best fragrance, in my opinion. If you made me kind of pick a Parfum de Marly, I would probably pick Herod. Um, you know, do I think it's groundbreaking or anything? No. Is it way too sweet? Yes. But do I still enjoy wearing it in the cold? It's usually like a once a year thing for me. Um, and then I've got my, that's it. I got it out of my system. Um, but... 
Uh, if you look at the top of a Parfum de Marly cap, and you can go research the whole story, but you see 1743 on it. And you also see it right here in the middle, 1743. Now, the average person is not going to go do the research and see exactly what that means, but the implication to me is clear that we date all the way back to 1743. Uh, now, that's not what they're saying. I don't, I don't want you to, now that they've got a high-powered uh, financial firm standing behind them, who is pro probably some of their people are going to be watching this going, shit, who is this guy? And why is he talking so much shit about us? Um, I'm on the hashtag initio nightmare list, probably. Um, but, you know, to me, that's the vibe that this gives me. And this gives me really big Creed vibe. Now, I like Creed. I have 20 plus Creeds in my collection. I'm wearing a damn Creed today. When I was dressed like this for, you know, important meetings, I wore a damn Creed. I wore Viking. And I've got a 500 mil of Viking. In fact, uh, I like Viking so much that I... Uh, went through an entire 100 mil bottle. I bought it when it first came out brand new, uh, retail, 2017. Um, and used the whole thing, the whole 100 mil, because when it first came out, they, that was the very first Creed that came out in 100 mil bottles. And so I bought it brand new, used the whole damn bottle. That's how much I loved it. And what I like about Viking is it has this very um, energetic, sprightly, spearmint-like opening uh, with a beautiful lavender some people say it smells like Old Spice. I kind of get what they're coming from, but like maybe the most posh Old Spice you could ever imagine. And um, a, a brilliant like um, sandalwood, orris butter note in there. There's all kind of really good things in, in Viking. And I like it because it gives you a lot to smell. It goes through transitions and all this stuff. I wish I knew who the perfumer of Viking was. So I ended up buying a 500 milliliter flacon of Viking and I just decant it and spray the shit out of it. And that energetic opening for me is perfect for the office because it feels like you just want to get something done. But anyways, enough about Viking. But that is my scent of the day. Um, and, I, and I've got it right here. And it is brilliant. It's a great... I think the original Viking got bashed in Fragcom um, originally, unfairly, in 2017. Because of Aventus, it had that same style as Aventus. And then people smelled it and they just really didn't give it a chance. It was easy to bash on... You know, it was easy to jump on the crowd and just bash Viking. But I actually really like Viking. But Parfum de Marly, to me, and Initio are sort of following in that Creed footsteps, whether you like it or not. Uh, to me, to my my opinion, uh, apparently, that's, that's my opinion, uh, the Rams' opinion. And so um, $700 million is a lot of jack, to be fair. And it's interesting because you don't see these houses going and buying the niche houses that people like me go out and rave about. You don't see them going and buying Papillon perfumery. They're buying the houses that are what? Money makers. That's what they want. It's all about money to them. And they're realizing they're not doing it for the love of perfume. If 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 you take these uh, brands that are being purchased by these capital companies, BlackRock, Advent International. In fact, um, the Byredo deal from a couple years ago was exactly the same thing. It was Manzanita Capital. Manzanita Capital owned Diptyque, and so they decided to expand their empire by buying Byredo. And so all of these companies that they're, that, you know, these capital companies, Creed, for example, they're seeing dollar signs. That's exactly what they're seeing. And they're seeing markups, they're seeing, they're not seeing all brilliant perfumery and artistic and art in a bottle. No, they're seeing a DNA that's been done a million times that they can produce on the cheap and sell for a gigantic markup. Huge markups. The Initio we're going to talk about today retails 90 mil. They don't even give you the extra 10 mil. 90 mils, $370. That's before paying tax and all that shit. It's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable, the pricing. So these capital firms, they're seeing dollar signs, right? And the reason they're seeing dollar signs is because you guys are buying the shit. Uh, now, to be fair, I did get this heavily discounted, but you can't really do anymore. You can't get these Parfum de Marlies or Initios heavily discounted anymore. They're really cracking down on that, which honestly, some of the, like this particular fragrance, I wouldn't buy if it was a $50 fragrance. I'll tell you that. And you guys know I'm not going to be easy on it, but I'm going to be fair. I'm going to tell you what I think about this. I do think this is one of the better Initio fragrances. So, uh, but I just wanted to talk about that buyout because that's what's happening in the industry. You're, that is actually the dream of every brand that starts out, for the most part. 
That's what that's why these people start these brands. You think they started Parfums de Marly because they want to produce artistic, amazing fragrances? No. This was the point. This was the entire point of starting Parfums de Marly for that guy and, and his sister or whatever they run the company's. I don't know what the whole deal. I, I don't really care to be honest with you. But you look at, you know, brands like this, for example. Right? Take a brand like MFK. He lived the dream for these. He set sort of the trend. Started his house, sold it to LVMH. Now he's the in-house perfumer of an LVMH brand in Dior. Um, and he made a he made an absolute boatload on the selling of his brand. That is the dream for these companies now. And the path has been paved and now the floodgates are open. That's it. Everyone and their mom is starting some fragrance house that Napoleon's um, you know, perfumer. They, they actually date back to Napoleon's special perfumer and they sell their bottles for $7,000 and it's just absolutely outrageous. Every house is a Roja. Every house is a, you know, uh, royal luxury niche house. Every house gives you these, you know, old school vintage dates as if they uh, come from the time of Christ. And it's just, you know, it's not going to go on. It can't go on like this forever. It just absolutely can't. No matter how... Many times they fool the, the consumer. Eventually, enough people are going to start listening to people like me and realize what the hell is going on. So, bravo to that guy for selling his brand. Honestly, I don't have any Initio bottles to show you, thank God. But uh, bravo to him for getting out. Bravo to Olivier Creed for, for getting a billion dollars out of BlackRock. BlackRock has no business owning a perfume company. I'll tell you that right now. They may own everything else, but they have no business owning a perfume company. Uh, in my opinion. And um, so whatever significant growth trends they're looking at, you know, whatever dollar signs they see that, uh, you know, gets them up in the morning is not in the benefit of you and me as fragrance lovers. I'm telling you that right now. So as a fragrance lover, there's one good piece of news. And that's that this trend of sort of waking up and realizing what is happening is picking up speed. Okay, and every time I see somebody like Mark from from Robes 08, and he's been on this for a while. He's not new to this, by the way. But every time, like recently, he did a video talking about checking out some of the houses that don't give out free bottles, like Serge Luton. Um, and every time a video is done where it exposes the fraud of what some of YouTube has become, warms my heart. That's what it does. It really warms my heart. I love seeing that. I love seeing. There's almost this awakening beginning to happen where it's starting to get popular to not hype some of the big hype beasts, you know, turn around and actually speak the truth about them. And that's what I want. That is the reason why I feel like the wind is at my back. And honestly, um, I feel like uh, there is a there is a need for this. There's a hole in the YouTube fragrance community for people saying this kind of stuff. Um, and and so. That's that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do with these videos. That's the reason I'm wasting my time reviewing stuff like Paragon. Honestly, that is the entire reason. Uh, outside of people asking me to do it, and this was sent to me by a friend, so I am giving my two thoughts. Um, I've only smelled it today. This is a true early impression. Not a first impression, because it's been on my wrist for a couple hours now, but this is an early impression, let's say. Uh, but the reason I'm doing that, you know, 99% of the time, I could get up here, spray a new fragrance, and just be like, shite. It's, it's not good. You know, it's a waste. How many, think about the amount of fragrances that come out every year. Think about, I could do a video like that every day and only scratch the surface of the amount of releases that come out every year. And there's a reason for that. Obviously, it's money. These houses are making an absolute killing. Um, if they send out some free bottles, if even a tiny portion of those viewers goes and buys a bottle, they're they're in the gold. They're they're in the clear. They're you know, obviously living life to the fullest at seven hundred million dollars. So um, that's sort of the issue. You have to today in the fragrance world, you have to be I think even more knowledgeable and even more uh, discerning with how you spend your money. And the issue I think is becoming is that. The onus is falling on us as the consumer, right? The reason that these companies are making these type of fragrances is because that's what sells, honestly. I hate to say it, it's the, it, it, it doesn't cost them a lot to do, and it's what sells, right? 
And so the way to get them to stop doing this type of stuff is to stop buying it. Stop participating in it. Do not buy these type of fragrances. Um, and I'll give you my thoughts on Paragon. It's actually probably, uh, if you twisted my arm and made me wear a Initio, this would probably be the one I would choose, to be honest with you. I would pick this, and we'll get into that. So I want to be fair on both sides of the coin. Like, when I think something is shit, I want to be able to say it. But when I think it's something is good, even if the crowd says it's terrible like they did with Viking, I want to have the ability to stand up here and tell you how I feel. I want to hype what I want to hype. I want to bash what I want to bash. And it's not because a brand tells me to. It's not because a brand says, hey, tell them Initio and Parfum de Marley are two separate houses. No, that's crap. Uh, obviously, they're joined at the hip. And so... You know, don't don't believe everything you hear in Fratcom. That's that's where I'm going with this sort of opening about talking with Advent International, buying a majority stake in uh, Parfums de Marley and Initio Parfums. Anyways, so uh, enough about that. That is uh, now that's one of those the more you know sort of uh, you know little little openings there. So let's talk a little bit about Paragon. So Paragon is a 2022 release. Okay. And, um, uh, like I said earlier, 90 mils is $370. So, Initio is proud, as usual. And, uh, um, so it comes in one of those white packaging, sort of the same packaging as Musk Therapy. I've never smelled Musk Therapy, but it sort of has that white, I don't know if it's like, I think it's, uh, some, one of their lines, I forget what it's called, but, um, they have like a particular line, um, a particular collection that falls in the white packaging and, and Paragon falls into that. And this is what they say on the website. They say Paragon goes beyond the skin all the way to the soul. Yeah, soul crushing. And leads you to another dimension, plentitude. Paragon houses the botanical soul of Paolo San Santo and white sage. It draws in the ben beneficial properties of these sacred plants whose use has been secretly passed down through initiation ceremonies dating back to the first lines of Inca shamans. The mystical blend holds both protective and purifying powers. It feeds self-confidence and helps the spirit to rise enveloped in positivity. Okay, so there you have it. Um, that is the little blurb according to um, their according to the Initio website. And it's it's described as a fruity, creamy fragrance on Parfumo. The top notes are white sage, lavender, and bergamot. The heart is plum, palo santo, and black pepper. The base is sandalwood and oud. So, um, here, here's the thing about this fragrance. It opens up extremely generic, fruity floral, and sweet, and musky. So it's basically a fruity, floral, musky tint with a Middle Eastern tint. So you know how Parfum de Marley and Initio love that generic, you know, Middle Eastern tint vibe that almost feels like it could be in a Latafa bottle, you know, but they sell it for $370. That's sort of the opening to this. And I really disliked the opening. Really did not like the opening. I was like, here we go again. God save the queen. Um, and so, it's, so it has this very um, generic... Middle Eastern vibe. If you've smelled other of this, you know, Middle Eastern style DNA, and you know what I'm talking about, if you've smelled some of the Nishane Middle Eastern lines, or, you know, some of the, I don't know, Roja Middle Eastern, Rojas are a little higher quality, I think, but just think of some of the generic Middle Eastern uh, style, Oriental, you know, fruity, uh, oody type feel, and that's really what it smells like. If it, it smells very generic and um, fruity, floral, musky, sort of in the opening. And um, the opening is my least favorite part, by the way. But if you smell that DNA and Parfum de Marly, you know you'll you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And I despise that DNA, absolutely despise it. It's so overdone. Um, I'm pretty tired from working all, it's literally Friday evening and I'm doing this video for you guys, still in my work clothes, because I do think it looks good um, to occasionally do a video dressed up, um, but I do not like this DNA. I mean, it's so, it's, it's, the horse has been absolutely whipped into the ground. Uh, and the other problem is I feel like you can go buy like a $20 Latafa and get a very similar DNA. 
Um, and that's a big problem that Initio has. I think that um, if you did want this style of fragrance, you could do it so much better and cheaper, but that's maybe a different conversation. Um, but to me, 2021 to 2022 was sort of the year of the Palo Santo wood. And Guerlain did a Palo Santo fragrance called uh, Santal Pau Rosa, which I've never smelled. I would like to one day. And Tom Ford did Ebene Fume, which basically smells like Gucci Pour Homme 1 with a Palo Santo note. Um, and uh, Roja has done Palo Santo fragrances. Celine has done a Palo Santo fragrance. Zara has done one. Prin Lomros has done one. It's It was almost like a little bit of a mini uh, rage or fad all of a sudden from these houses. And uh, many times, I don't think they're using real Palo Santo wood. I think it's some sort of an accord that the perfumer put together. I actually know what Palo Santo wood smells like uh, because I have some. I have some that's unburned, and I've burned it before because I was given two of these. And so this is one I have not burned yet, and it's it's uh, supplied by the House of Matriarch. But you can see right here, it says Palo Santo, and this is the wood. Here, let me open this. So, a gift of Paolo Santo. And so, um, interestingly enough, so that's basically what Paolo Santo wood looks like, okay? And it has a very um, interesting smell. The real wood has a very interesting smell. Um, and it almost has this herbal sage-like smell. So, the way that Matriarch describes it, is the wood is filled with a fragrant oil. Uh, it's also known as sacred wood, or Palo Santo, I think, literally means holy wood. Okay, that's like the literal definition, holy wood, uh, or sacred wood. And apparently it's been used for centuries by shamans, as uh, Anishio so terribly put it in their write-up, uh, for like ceremony and healing and meditation and stuff like that. Uh, and so it's used as an incense or for smudging. Uh, and so the sacred and mystical natural incense is 100% natural and sustainable. And so basically what you do with this is you burn one of the ends. You allow it to burn for a couple seconds, five seconds, ten seconds, and you blow it out. And, that, and then, you know, you get the incense in the air, basically. Um, and so that's sort of the um, back of the, of the postcard that matriarch sends along with their Palo Santo wood, but this was kind of cool to get to know uh, because I have smelled it burned. I've, I, I can smell it unburned. And so I kind of have a feel for the note. And, um, you know, the, uh, the, the interesting thing with Palo Santo is there's many little nuances to it. Some say there's a little bit of a pine green like nuance. Uh, to me, there's a very weird, almost lactonic vibe with Palo Santo wood. Um, and it's almost like this bodily fluid smell. Okay, we'll be politically correct on Channel Ram today. So if you know the um, sec secretions magnifique, right? Or if you know the secret note in Mugler Cologne, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So you get my drift. There's this weird, lactonic, um, slight incense-y vibe to it. But imagine like this milky strangeness with it. Uh, it's actually a really weird note to me because I love incense. I love frankincense. On this hand, though, I love Elemy because it adds this like lemony, fresher take on, on frankincense and incense. But Palo Santo almost adds this strange, herbal, lactonic, smoky vibe um, that with, with green hints. And what basically, um, what you get from Paragon, once that entirely too sweet opening that um you know what did i say this fruity um you know this this weird fruity oriental sweet opening starts to dry what you end up getting from the fragrance um is you get this um after the generic fruitiness goes away is you start to get uh a and by the way i should mention that the generic fruitiness is I literally say generic fruitiness because if you look at the note listing, they really uh, hone in on the note of plum. I don't smell plum in this. I mean, maybe plum is part of that generic fruitiness, but don't expect plum in like the classical perfumery sense. Don't expect it like you would expect in something like Rochas Femme, okay? 
Um, fantastic plum fragrance. Uh, if, if you are new to the fragrance community, okay, I'm just going to pause my par my ramble on Paragon real quick and just talk to the newcomers in the community. If you are new to the community, do not spend $370 on an initio, please do not go spend 30 bucks and get yourself a bottle of femme, whether you're a man or a woman, go get you a bottle of femme. You will learn more from this fragrance. Uh, about what perfume is all about than if you owned every single Initio. I'm telling you, go get yourself a bottle of Femme. Um, if you're really adventurous, go get yourself a bottle of uh, Dior's Poison. And if you can find the older Esprit de Parfums, this is a fantastic plum. There is some tuberose in here and um, big oriental animalic honey. That uh, tuberose note tends to put some people off. That's really hard for me to wear, and it is huge. One of the biggest fragrances. Um, and if you're a hunter... If you want a fantastic plum uh, that no one talks about, that I think really even inspired Dior's Poison, try to find a bottle of this. Leonard's Balahe. Um, just a, I am stunned by this fragrance. It's a newer edition. I've had it in the last now month or two, but I've worn it to bed a couple times and Balahe has completely knocked my socks off. I love that stuff. I think I like it even more than Poison. It's that good. It is, you know, top shelf stuff for me. So don't expect plum in like the classical perfumery sense. You know, expect more of a generic fruitiness from Paragon. Because that's what you're going to get. And um, now, um, after that generic fruitiness begins to sort of, uh, the sweetness begins to dry down. Because the sweetness does this in this fragrance as time goes on. So as the hours have ticked by... The sweetness is slowly beginning to give up. It's slowly beginning to release its grip on the fragrance, which thank God, you know, because that's my least favorite part. That fruit, that sweet fruitiness really gets to me. And um, to Initio's credit, once that extreme sweetness, and I highlight extreme sweetness because the opening is extremely sweet, um, almost in like an inexperienced girl kind of way. You know, it has this just like, carefree teenage girl vibe in the opening, which I really don't like. I do not like that um, style of perfumery. No offense if you enjoy wearing teenage girl carefree fragrances, but uh, for me, I expect a lot more when I pay $370 for a fragrance. I expect art in a bottle. Well, I mean, if you know anything about uh, Initio, uh, you would know you're not going to get that, but that's what someone would expect if you wandered in off the street and had no clue what the hell was going on here. For $370, you better get something just absolutely amazing. And um, obviously, you're not going to get that from an issue. But uh, to their credit, to be fair, because I always want to be uh, objective. I always want to be fair to both sides of the argument. This fragrance um, begins to come into its own two, three hours in. I'm about three hours in anyways right now. And um, I can tell you that as it's drying down, what's happening is um, I'm starting to get um, more and more of that. So there's this white sage smell and Palo Santo wood gives off a sage like greenness anyways. So there's white sage and there's Palo Santo that itself gives off this, uh, sage like smell. And what it ends up doing is it ends up giving off almost this aromatherapy like feel. So imagine, um, smelling this herbal, you know, aromatherapy like sage note. Um, and, but imagine, imagine that you're doing it, um, in this Middle Eastern style. So it's a very pungent, actually, um, you know, imagine you're like crushing the sage in your hand, right? And it's giving off this pungent, strong aroma. And then you're mixing it with the Palo Santo wood. And what I talked about earlier with that lactonic, that incense vibe, right? With a little bit of pepper and um, lavender. And Parfum de Marly and Initio both love doing this. They love taking this sort of generic composition and just throwing lavender in there. As if that's just going to fix everything. Oh, there's lavender in it. Um... And, and it's just sort of like a thing they've always done. And the lavender note always seems like weirdly just stapled onto a composition. You know, it doesn't feel like it really fits well. And but to their credit here, the lavender does still stick out. But 
I like what the lavender is is doing here. Once that sweetness dies down and you can actually smell it, that is, because I don't get lavender right off the bat. I get that weird, or you know, like I said, fruity floral musk thing, teenage girl vibe. But once that dies down and the lavender starts to come out, it starts to become almost more masculine. And so this fragrance takes a turn. Uh, and it actually takes a turn for the better, shockingly. Shockingly, it does. Um, now, uh, the absolute joke note in this scent is the oud note in the bass. So they list a note of oud, and if you know Anishio, you, you probably um, expect to get 0. .000001 or whatever it is. I don't know how many zeros you can put on there. Uh, you could probably put like a thousand zeros, uh, 0.000001% oud. Uh, just legally so they can say there's oud in there. Or who knows, maybe it's 0. 0.1, maybe it's 0. 0.5, maybe it's whatever it is. Uh, but it doesn't smell like there's a large amount of, of oud in here, and it doesn't smell like you're getting very high quality oud. It doesn't smell that way, okay? Maybe they used high quality oud, but um, it doesn't smell like you're smelling high quality oud, okay? Um, and so, um, so... I like kind of where the fragrance has gone two, three hours in. Uh, it, it, it turned a little bit. And um, I think if you twisted my arm and you said that I had to pick one Initio fragrance, I think that this would be it. I would pick this over Side Effect, which I have a video on if you're interested in my thoughts on Side Effect. Aaron Terrence Hughes' favorite Initio fragrance. Or if you want my thoughts on Oud for Greatness, I just did one when, when I was in the hotel room a couple days ago. Um, and so if you want more Ram being upset and offended, go watch my Oud for Greatness video. This one doesn't offend me as much. Um, I'm not saying it's a good fragrance. Please do not misconstrue my words. I am not saying that Paragon is a good fragrance by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying that it's almost like the, um, least bad option. Okay. So it's almost like the, the, the worst of a lot of bad op options. Um, the, or the best of a lot of bad options, if you will. That's the way that it feels to me. So, um, that's sort of my take on it. I mean, uh, the, the oud in the base is almost a joke to me. The, um, Palo Santo wood, which is just like this weird trend thing that everyone was doing all of a sudden. And this is again, 2022. So it, it fits right in. Actually, it fits right in with the brand. Uh, because Initio's trademark to me is not a particular smell or anything like that, but it's copying what everyone else is doing in the industry. That's what they did for Oud for Greatness. They just took that generic, you know, Oud note, and they stuck it with that Baccarat Rouge disgusting sweetness, which I absolutely despise. And, um, they created Oud for Greatness. Um, and just to show you how high-powered and, and expensive all of the ingredients are. Latafa cloned it for $20 in Oud for Glory or whatever it is. Um, and so that's, uh, Initio has a big problem because in a perfect world, you know, these niche houses, even if the formula was out, even if they posted the damn formula online, uh, Latafa or Armaf or Ardal Zafran or any of those clone houses should not just be able to take the formula and do a clone and get 99% there because, you know, there should be like this high quality expensive material that's stopping the clone houses from doing that. Whether it's a expensive new musk type or whether it's a uh, real oud or whether it's whatever it is, you know, they're using high end lavender instead of the blended lavender or whatever it is, right? Uh, whatever touch the, the niche houses are doing, that's what Olivier Creed did for years. He took Pierre Bourdon's formulas and just replaced everything with expensive ingredients um, and, you know, added the real ambergris and all this stuff. And everyone laughed at him because the perfumer's job was partly to, you know, make sure that the bottom line worked out as well. They were almost like accountants of the stuff they were putting in into the equation. And Olivier Creed just threw that book out and put the most expensive stuff in there. It wasn't like unique, hugely unique creations or anything. He was taking briefs from, from, uh, Pierre Bourdon that were failed briefs, basically, according to the book, um, according to the book, the ghost perfumer, by the way, which you should read this by Gabe Oppenheim. So again, if you're new to the community, there's a couple things that I will give you a quick tip on, and then we'll end this video. Um, 
don't go buy the stuff that's hyped. Whatever's hyped, that's what you want to stay away from. It's almost like nowadays in the news. If you Google something uh, and they give you an answer, you can almost like assume that that is the exact opposite of, of what's truly going on. They've made themselves so transparent, they've almost become a joke in some areas of the news, right? Uh, like, I can't I can't watch any of... We don't get news in, in America anymore, unfortunately. Uh, and and so, I, you know, I, the best thing to do is, is not to watch or know that you're being just fed complete and utter, and utter BS, right? When you watch these channels, these other channels, um, that are getting the free bottles, right? That are influencers. If they're out there hyping some new thing, that's the exact thing you want to stay away from. It's almost like, uh, it's not, it's, it's almost like a, uh, it could be like a dignity test or something, you know? Uh, and if you see all of these channels getting free bottles and they all upload the videos like within the, within like a one or a two week time frame, right? And, 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 and they've all uploaded the exact same video for, let's say, Roja's uh, Elysium Owen Taunts or something, and I've never smelled that. So maybe it's a fantastic fragrance, but just the fact that every single influencer uploaded their video, got their videos within like a two week time frame when the free bottles went out, completely put me off. Any influencer that uploaded their video in that two week time frame, I just unsubscribe to. That's 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 basically how I roll now. Um, and, and so, because like for me, you see, I don't have a, I'm not on the initial free bottle list. I have a little sample that I work off of. And to be honest, this is enough. You know, I sprayed it two or three times. That's, that's enough. There's still um, one, there's still probably 1.2 or 3 mils in here. Um, you don't need a full bottle to make a decision to review a scent. Besides, they don't even do good reviews on a lot of those channels. They hardly even go, you know, past what the notes say anyways. Uh, all they do is get up there and talk about how delicious it is and how great it is. And uh, they're surface level anyway. What do they need a free bottle for? They need a free bottle because they want to show it to you. Because they want you to see it. They want you to want, they want you to want to hold the bottle in your hand and go buy it. And that's, that's the whole game right now in Fragcom. But it's starting to get flipped on its head. And I'm proud that I can be part of the solution to that. That makes me happy. Um... And, you know, I, um, I think more and more people are going, once it, once the floodgates sort of open, I think that's it. I mean, uh, the real frag heads have walked through that gate years and years ago, but I think now it's almost become so transparent, almost like what I was saying about with, uh, some of the news we get, uh, nowadays that it's become so transparent that even the average person is like, wait a minute. Uh, how does this guy have all 11 initios and he just started his channel like a month ago? Um, you know, and, and, and asking questions is a good thing, like I said at the beginning. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed sort of the ramble on Paragon. Uh, do not take this as a full review because it's literally just an early impression. Um, but that's my thoughts from, 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 you know, first getting to smell it. Uh, let me know what you think about the whole, um you know, the whole um, global private equity firms buying these uh, perfume companies. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you agree with me that it's probably going to take, uh, you know, it's probably going to take things even further away from where real perfume fragrance aficionados want the um, industry to go. Uh, it's probably going to make things even more commercialized, but that's okay because there's other little brands that pop up that we can find and, and talk about and love. But I'm going to continue to do these so-called negative reviews where it's necessary. Like I said, I think Paragon is probably the, um, um, if you twisted my arm and forced me to wear an Initio, this might be what I would wear. Just because the dry down isn't as um, offensive as like that Oud for Greatness or Side Effect or anything like that. So, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, if you've smelled Paragon, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you, um, you know, have any thoughts on the buyout, let me know in the comments. I We are still small enough on this channel where I can respond to every single comment. Who knows how long that will be, but for the time being, I'm going to try to respond to every single person that leaves a comment. I very much appreciate the support and everything that the community has given to me. I feel um, very blessed to get to do these videos without any crazy editing or anything like that. I just click start on the video spiel give you the ram spiel and click end and upload it um so i i appreciate you joining me and sitting down with me tonight 
Everyone have a great evening. Cheers. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.